Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Colin, call sign MM0OPX. We've got the rare opportunity um, to set up the phase verticals uh, in the garden. <coughs> Not done this for a little while, um, so that's exactly what I thought I would do. Um, and I appreciate there's been quite a lot of um, new subscribers recently, so thank you to uh, one and all for that. Um, so yeah, so just a chance to play some radio uh, and do some further testing on your testing with um, phase verticals. So I'm going to be working with um, the 20 meters phase verticals. Um, I know a lot of you have probably seen this before, but what I'll actually do is I'll just go completely through the setup, all the, the main details. So if you've not seen it, uh, and if you have seen it, maybe you just want to skip um, skip on a bit there. So let's go and have a look at the, uh, the setup. I do apologize about the wind noise if it's not making the audio um, sound pretty good. Um, so, as you know, I have a, a relatively small garden. Um, it's bigger than some people's, but it's it's not massive. Um, but you know, running this 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 system that I'm running, it doesn't uh, 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 require um, too much space. So these are um, identical antennas. These are quarter wave verticals, in essence. Um, it's, as I said, both completely um, identical, and I've got them running in phase. So. The poles I'm using, these are Life's a Breeze um, Pro Pole, 6 meter pole. Um, it's an extremely thick pole. You can see the wall thickness there. And I have my own kind of little guy system. Um, if I come down to the feed box, that is exactly that. Um, nothing fancy about it. All it's doing is providing a connection for an SO239. Um, this is the ground connection running to radio plate. And I have... Um, <coughs> Um, about 20, 20 quarter wavelengths of radials. Um, these radials are in bunches of eight wires. Um, this is the Sota Beams lightweight wire, and you can buy that in 500 meter rolls. So it's that 1500 feet, 1600 feet, something like that. Um, so yeah, both had both antennas completely identical. Um, actually, if I go back, the wire runs up so far, but then I have it attached to bungee cord. Uh, have it taped to the end there, so that just keeps tension on the um, tension on the uh, the wire. And um, the beauty with these poles is, if I wanted to run elevated radials, I could raise this up to um, here, and then I could actually run elevated radials. Um, and I'd only need a couple of them, and that would. So I'll, I'll maybe do that with a portable, but working in the garden here, and um, the radials. The short radials, these are two meter length radials, just work um, um, perfect. So we have coax that comes off each of these antennas. Now these are the phase lines, or the I call them the feed lines or the phase lines. So these are 157 degree um, phase lines. And these run back to this relay box. And it's nothing fancy. If I'm honest, there's only two relays inside. Um, and there's a control on the other side, a control cable for switching. So these are the two two antennas. So this is the east antenna, this is the west antenna, and this so these connections in the bottom are the is the delay line, and this is a 39 degree um, delay line. So basically, when you feed this antenna, so these these two these two connections are shorted out, and these two connections are shorted out. So when you feed RF in here, it feeds it to this antenna first, but then it, it also it delays it through this line. And then it feeds it to here. And then the side that is delayed is the side where you actually get gain. So on the other side here, this is just the connection. Um, hopefully you can see that alright. This is the connection back to the transceiver. And as I said, this is actually a, um, a subtle connection I use. And that's simply um, just a three-core three cable. Uh, and that runs actually back into the shack. So these antennas themselves, they're actually um, orientated exactly, almost exactly east to west. Um, so some stations, I probably won't see any difference front to back or gain. You know, stations like Spain, Portugal, England, um, but stations that are further around Eastern Europe um, and the States, um, we should see some um, front to back. Um, I actually had these set up last night, set these up later on last night, and I was actually seeing very little front to back. Um, but that's just to do with conditions. Um, we don't always see lots of front to back all the time, and I think it's just to do with the uh, the angle of the um, 
the propagation as it's coming in. Um, but it's been, it's actually, the front to back's actually been a lot better um, this morning. So let's go and have a look at the, uh, the shack end. So back in the shack here. Um, this this room that I'm in, it's actually it's actually it's our, it's our dining room, or it was our dining room, but um, it's mostly mostly playroom. As you can see, it's full of Barbie stuff, but um, it's also a, a home office and it's also a shack. Um, so I have my kind of radios crammed over here, so it's a little bit messy. But yes, yeah, so the radio, the radio, the main radio here in the shack is the the seventy three hundred. I do have my five ninety. I I usually use that portable sometimes. Um, Obviously hooked to the computer. I have my Acom 1000. This this has hardly ever been used. This this linear, very lightly used. I bought, I purchased this when I passed my um, full exam, back in I think about um, 2013. I think I bought this or possibly 2012. Um, it's the older style. Uh, this is the uh, switch box for the um, for the phase verticals. So this is the um, Control cable. This is this is just the one cable, and I just have that running in through the window up there. And there's a power cable. Simple, just 12 volt DC, and I've hooked up to that battery. Um, it's not fused, but it doesn't need to be. It wouldn't matter which way the cables were. Um, so I have it has a, a three position switch. So this is point east, and the middle is broadside, and obviously west on the right. Um, so that would be towards kind of North America and. Europe for the kind of east. Um, broadside almost gives it a, 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 a dipole pattern, um, so that would be kind of north-south broadside. Um, so there's actually a CW contest on here, so I'm not quite sure. I, think, I have seen some front to back on this, if you look at this. Um, You see the difference in the signal there? We'll do it again. So that's at point east, so you should be strong, I think, on this side. See, there's a couple less points of difference. And that's what we're looking for. Again, the front to back does vary, um, just dependent on the angle of the propagation. You can see that's about 2s points, so that's, that's, still, that's still a fair few dB uh, difference. Um, so what I'll do is I'll try and tune about a few stations and um, see if I could look at some front to back and uh, hopefully um, we could even perhaps work a couple of stations um, and certainly the amplifier um, should help. So CW actually seems to be, it's actually seems to be a bit better for actually showing front to back so we'll, we'll look for a few stations there and we'll do some front to backs. an S point on that station, there's not a lot on that one. But again it depends where they are. See the difference on that, that station? Come back. There's a good few, good few uh, S points on that station.
Yankee Tango. Şu bir daha Serbia mı be? Yap Serbia. See, there's no, nothing on that station. Thank you, be a good chance you're directly south of me. points maybe in that station. Yeah, you see the difference there. You can actually see these lines just started here. This is interference I get periodically here. It's like birdies. Not quite sure what it is. I think it's coming from a neighbour. See the difference in that station. Yeah, that's the interference. Wow, look at the difference in that. Wow, that's incredible front to back. That's seven S points a difference on that front to back. USB mine, but Oscar Papa, who's that? Belgium. I mean, the band is just flat. That sloppy there was. The contacts are actually dirty. I really need to take my key apart and then actually clean the contacts. That's what was wrong there. That was HP9 CBR. Just coming to the end of uh, yet another video. Um, disappointing band conditions uh, today. Um, not saying it should have been expected but my kind of operating time was round about midday and it's not ideal on 20 metres um, the morning uh, and then later on in the afternoon would have been better because it would have had North America coming in um, but just unfortunately I just, I'm just un unable to operate these times I've just got a short window um, to operate and I do apologise again about the, um, the poor audio uh, on the webcam video um, but I'll try and fix it for the next video if I have to film that um, Phase verticals are a funny thing, and I find that the front to back when you're switching, I find it 
frustrating at times almost. Um, you know, you think you're going to put up these antennas and you're going to see great front to back automatically. That's just, as I've experienced, that's not the case. And I know other people um, that's experienced that. Um, I've got a friend over in the States, Justin, um, Kilo Golf 2, Romeo Golf. He's been doing lots of experimenting with phase verticals and I'll put a link to his channel in the description. He's actually probably went a bit, done a bit more experimentation than I have now. Um, and he was, he did say to me that he wasn't seeing front to back and I says no, I says stick with it. I says you need to test it for a few weeks and then he came back to me and said, you know, you're right. Um, you need to stick with it. So a few of the stations as you've seen there and you know, I didn't, I didn't really edit anything out there. You could see that there were stations um, that had no front to back whatsoever and there was a couple of them and especially the Oscar Papa, Oscar Papa station, the Belgian station, that had real impressive front to back there, anything up to maybe 5 S points I reckon. Um, so that was real, really impressive. Um, so just before I packed in there I actually tried to call CQ on, on SSB for a little while. I even ran you know, full legal limit here and not one person came back to me. But the, the, the spectrum, the SSB spectrum was flat. There was three stations and they were all calling in um, I think it was Portugal Day contest, Portuguese contest. Um, so nobody came back to me, um, so I thought before packing up I would go and have a look at FT8 um, and I, honestly it was my first CQ on FT8 and, and I was spotted in North America and South America but the signals just weren't strong enough, they were like minus 20, minus 23 so the, it's just telling me that band, the band conditions weren't there and if you don't have um, you don't have the band conditions, you don't have anything, it doesn't matter um, what antenna you have. So I hope the video has been um, helpful for some of you. Um, don't put off trying phase verticals, it looks complicated, but it's not really. Um, you could make a one-way phase vertical, so you could do it with coax um, T-pieces um, kind of thing and, and, and do it that way, just make it up with connectors and then you'll have a switched, that'll be permanently, permanently um, putting your gain in one direction and you'll get the, the benefit of the, the front to back as well but the downside of that is um, um, you won't be able to switch but say you were going to a coastal location and you just wanted for he us in the UK you wanted to point it towards North America or VK you could do that and that would be that would be uh, that would be okay and um, it wouldn't be too expensive to do that um, so yeah so that that's about it um, the, the next project I'm working on is a 20 meter uh, Moxon portable antenna it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's pretty well built, most of it's built and I'm just working on the feed point at the minute there and how I'm going to support the coax going out to the feed point and once I get that done I'll probably do a video of me using it, setting it up but I will do a build video um, or what I, what I did do to build it. Okay, um, thanks once again if you've lasted to this long and listened to all my waffling. It's 73 for now and we'll see you in the next video.